Throughout his career at Kitchen Nightmares, Chef Gordon Ramsay is known for being quite harsh with the owners and staff of the restaurants he visits. But in the end, he always gives them the boost they need to save their business and ends up becoming friends with the owners. Well, maybe not all of them, but you get my point. But as we all know, not all restaurants could stand the test of time, and unfortunately, some of their owners couldn't either. That's why we're here to remember and pay our respects to the chefs who passed away after appearing on Kitchen Nightmares. We begin with one of the show's most endearing owners, Rosemary Leon, who appeared in season four in 2011 with her restaurant Leon's in Montclair, New Jersey. Rose had been running the Italian restaurant successfully since 1996, but a complication from kidney stone surgery forced her to step away from the business and leave it to her son, Michael, who was not up to the challenge. Because of her situation and lack of dedication, the customers were no longer attracted to Leon's, and the place began to fall apart. After two years in a coma, Rose finally recovered, but nearly fell ill again when she saw the terrible state of her restaurant. She decided to call Gordon Ramsay to correct the situation, and especially her lazy son, who spent all day watching sports in the restaurant as if he were just another client. Although she was still carrying some health problems, Rose tried to do everything she could to bring Leon's back to life like a phoenix and regain the old glory she gave it. Rose was a tireless worker and a true role model for the Montclair community. Unfortunately, her son Michael did not inherit any of these tributes, so the rest of the staff had to take on many more responsibilities than they should have. But with such a carefree boss, everything was more difficult. But to tell the truth, this was one of the episodes in which Ramsay was more in sync with the owner since Rose was also tough and didn't mind criticizing her son to save the restaurant. And with Gordon's help, she managed to raise Michael's ambition and bring new air to the restaurant. Unfortunately, Rose left us on April 5th, 2014 at the age of just 64 for undisclosed reasons, but probably due to health complications. But that doesn't mean she abandoned her restaurant, and to this day, Leon's continues to delight the Montclair community with his Italian menu under the direction of Michael, who is proudly carrying on his mother's legacy. May you rest in peace, Rosemary. Your business fell into good hands. Unfortunately, sometimes both restaurants and owners don't have happy endings. This was the case for William Leroy, nicknamed Billy, who purchased the Handel Bar and Restaurant in Mount Sinai, New York, with his wife, Carolyn. Although they had good intentions, Problems quickly arose because the couple had no previous experience as managers of a restaurant. A chef with little skill in the kitchen, an old-fashioned 80s decor, and owners on the verge of losing their homes to keep the restaurant was enough for Gordon to come to the rescue in 2008. The main problem was the poor quality of the dishes and the storage of food in the fridge, something Billy refused to admit and even ignored Chef Ramsay's suggestions. Billy even showed the intention of selling the restaurant, but his wife and Chef Ramsay managed to convince him to give the business one last chance. And thank God they did. Sure, there were some complications, such as Chef Melissa's lack of communication and poor organization in the food delivery. But thanks to that, Billy realized that Handlebar needed to change. Since then, he was very open to Ramsay's innovative proposals, allowing his property to become Long Island's first gastropub, a place open at all hours to relax and enjoy. At the relaunch, they invited a bunch of bikers for a rally, including singer Dee Snyder, producing one of the most entertaining moments of the show. In 2009, Ramsey revisited the restaurant and was delighted that the renovations paid off, with Billy and Carolyn working hand in hand to keep the place full of customers. But unfortunately, the couple had to sell the handlebar because of Bill's health, who contracted cancer that year. After a long battle against cancer, William Leroy departed the world in November 2015, but he left a big mark on the hearts of his customers and viewers alike. His online obituary is full of beautiful messages, remembering him as a hardworking and pleasant person. As for the handlebar, it was reopened a couple times under different names, and today you can find it as the Benchwarmers Tavern, which enjoys good reviews. Rest in peace, Billy. You left us too early, but you fought to the end. Let's go to the second Italian restaurant on this list, La Gondola, located in Derby, England. The place was owned by Daniela Bayfield, who bought it in 2004 with her mother's inheritance because of the great memories she had at La Gondola, where she celebrated her 21st birthday and her wedding. The thing is that Roberto Giovanelli, the previous owner, set up the restaurant and hotel in the 1960s, and since then, the place has been frozen in time, although in his days, it was quite crowded by the upper class to celebrate parties and such. 
But while the rest of the world moved on and adapted to new fashions, the gondola continued to cling to the old ways, unaware that it was leading them to ruin. In 2005, Ramsey decided to come to their call for help, although the situation was more complicated than he expected. The head chef, Steve, had been working at the gondola since 1975. So every bit tasted like flared pants and disco. And guess what? Steve doesn't like suggestions. Thanks to Ramsey's heavy hand, the chefs adopted a new menu and revamped their marketing tactics, attracting far more customers than they had intended. After that, the restaurant enjoyed some success. And when Gordon revisited it soon after, he found himself with a new chef after Steve's departure. Don't you find it curious that chefs almost always leave after Gordon convinced them to stay? Although the food went down in quality, all other aspects such as music and hospitality were going quite well with Daniela at the helm. But unfortunately for her, that period of peace was too brief, as the restaurant had to close in 2007 and went into voluntary liquidation. On the other hand, the hotel survived for only a few more years, mostly because of weddings, but also closed in 2012. Although many see the glass as half empty, Daniela saw that it as half full, and she had plans to turn the hotel into a refugee home, which would have been very nice to see, but the project came to an end with Daniela's death in 2019. Today, La Gondola is completely abandoned and plans to demolish it remain unrealized. The entrance and some of the rooms appear to be in good condition, while the kitchen looks abandoned, with rust and dust everywhere. According to Cam Kirk, a Stafford photographer who ventured into the place, he found several pieces of evidence that drug addicts and vagrants had used it as a shelter. Hopefully, his photos will motivate some investors to rescue the place, since behind so much decay, there are vestiges of what once was. Likewise, Natalie Bayfield, Daniela's daughter, hosted an ad on LinkedIn to sell the hotel, along with a short story about her Italian grandparents who settled in England fleeing World War II. In that post, she relates that her mother was born in a Polish refugee camp in Cambridge, which would explain her last project in life. Rest in peace, Daniela. You left in the most peaceful way, in your dreams, and you marked many people with your kindness and joy. But would you find kindness and joy in a former member of the Mafia? Well, anyone can redeem themselves. This was the case for mobster Abe Saffron's son, Alan, who participated in Kitchen Nightmares in 2011 with his Burger Kitchen restaurant in Los Angeles. Things were already looking pretty bad from the start, as just 16 months after opening, the restaurant was on the verge of collapse. With a portion of his multi-millionaire family's inheritance, Alan was able to start the business, but the problem is that part of the money was taken from his son, Daniel Scher. So we are facing family chaos. With losses of $6,000 a month, they had to turn to Ramsey, who encountered so many problems that the episode was split into two parts. Everything was a mess in the kitchen, with disorganized chefs and an unstable menu. Ingredients that ended up exploding when you have a dysfunctional family running the business. After many arguments, yelling and general anger, the Saffron family concluded that they should leave the restaurant in the hands of their son Daniel, who was dragged into the restaurant but ended up becoming the best man for the job. In other aspects, Alan showed a talent for literature with his book, Gentle Satan, in which he tells different stories about his early years with his father, Abe, a well-known mafia boss in Australia. Away from the kitchen, Alan made a career in entertainment as a talent manager for the likes of Tobin Bell and helped start the Saw franchise. As owner of Polaris Entertainment, Alan worked with such great actors as Rod Steger and Robert Downey Jr and also co-produced several films during his time at Atlantic Studios. With an award for Talent Manager of the Year in Los Angeles, I think it's pretty clear that this man's true passion was not gastronomy, but the entertainment business. As for the Burger Kitchen, I may be exaggerating a bit when I say that Daniel was the right leader because the restaurant was sold shortly after Ramsey's visit. Although the new owners changed the menu, the service was still very poor and the Yelp reviews were even worse. So Burger Kitchen closed for good in February of 2012. Currently, the location is occupied by Thie, a Greek restaurant and bar that enjoy good reviews on Yelp. On April 19th, 2020, Alan suffered a sudden heart attack, leaving this world at the age of 71. Rest in peace, Alan. You still had more to do, but man, did you have an exciting life. The perfect example that you should never let the past define you. We end with the most tragic case of all, a man full of joy and self-determination who took the most tragic decision a person can make. Joseph Cerniglia was a chef that, in 2005, acquired the restaurant Campania, located in Fairlawn, New Jersey. And to be honest, it was a wonderful place until he took the reins. 
Just 18 months after the purchase, Ramsey had to come to the rescue, getting a very bad first impression. The food was tasteless, the staff was irresponsible and childish, and in the center of all was Joe, who was very charismatic but didn't take the business seriously. However, with Ramsey's guidance, Joe learned to have the authority of a leader, a quality that is more than necessary if your house is at risk for a $200,000 debt. By the end of the episode, Joe looks like a real boss, taking charge of both the kitchen and the guests and inspiring his staff to do their best. Throughout 2008, things went quite well for Joe as he won Chef Central's Bergen Ultimate Chef competition and was one of the finalists in that same tournament the next year. However, his personal life began to fall apart with rumors about an affair with his pastry chef, Jessica Morata. Although this was never confirmed, Joe's marriage with his wife Melissa was at a critical stage according to family members, who claimed they were not living together. Meanwhile, Campania continued to function normally until July of 2010. The customers called the police with suspicions that Joe was under the influence of narcotics, as he exhibited a stressed attitude, heavy sweating, and tremors. After receiving medical attention and spending some time under arrest, Joe decided to sell the restaurant in September 2010 for no reason. But soon after, we all know why. On September 27, 2010, Joseph jumped off the George Washington Bridge, taking his own life at the age of 39. Even though there was nothing but rumors around him, Joe confirmed his terrible mental state by making such a drastic decision, leaving his wife Melissa with three children to take care of. The news of his death shook the internet, with bold posts like the one by chef Eric Rippert that targeted Ramsey as rude to the show's chefs, but shortly after Rippert clarified that he was not blaming him. For his part, Gordon offered his condolences via Twitter, remembering Joe as a great chef he was lucky to share time with. Rest in peace, Joseph. You are a reminder that mental health is an issue that needs more visibility even today. Beyond the different circumstances in which each chef passed away, they were an example that perseverance pays off, and even if the future is not always bright, you can always start from nothing.